All right, what's up guys? Today is going to be about Hack the Box and Pwn Box. So Hack the Box has gone through a lot of new updates and it has um, a completely new interface. Um, it is still in beta, so they're still working on it. It is not a finished product yet. And they also have a new like way to use their system. So Pwn Box is an online um, virtual machine that you can log into use and then it doesn't have anything to do with your computer so you're, you're not downloading anything you're not running anything you can run it on a potato or a chromebook or anything with an internet connection so now you don't have to have a computer that's capable of running a virtual machine or having a dedicated kali linux or parrot um, system and I think this is a great move for Hack the Box because one, it's going to make them money and two, it's going to widen their user base. So let's take a look at it. So I'm going to open up Hack the Box. Um, maybe I'm going to log in with my account. Close my YouTube notifications. Go away. Um, and you can find it by clicking the new UI and checking out Pwnbox. So let's let's take a look and see where it is. So if you click connection settings in the top right, you can either download your OpenVPN um, configuration file and then run that through your Kali or Parrot or even Windows. So you can run OpenVPN on Windows as well. And then you'll be connected to their virtual network and that'll allow you to hack into the machines, um, use battlegrounds and all sorts of stuff like that. Um, you don't need to be connected to the VPN to use challenges though. Challenges, you just download the zip file, extract it, and you're good to go. But what we will be doing today is using Pwnbox. So as you can see, I have used a whole six minutes of it. I tried to do a little bit of uh, pre-recorded stuff and figure out what's going on within Pwnbox, and I think you guys are gonna like it. So you click your location. Uh, for me, the best uh, ping, so the latency between me doing something and the server doing something is actually in Canada, even though I am here in the United States. So I'm guessing that this one is US East um, and that the Canada one is more central or just has a better internet connection. So click Canada. And then I'm gonna do the US free lab just because I am a US resident. It doesn't really matter. You can pick any of them because I actually don't know what the VPN access is different. I think it just depends on how many people are on each lab. Um, and then you can see who, how many people are on each server. So the least amount of people is US free one. So I'm gonna use that one and then once that connects, I should start the Pwn box. Success, the server has been switched. All right, so we're gonna start Pwn box. So it's reestablishing the instance that I created a long time ago. Um, so if you do install things, say you wanted Durbuster instead of GoBuster, or you wanted a certain update or something, um, it does not keep that. So it wipes the server, reinstalls the original Pwnbox OS. And so this isn't like a dedicated server for you. It just, once you deactivate it, all your information goes away and then someone else can activate that instance and use it. Uh, so we're going to open desktop. This will bring us into a new tab. And here we are. So I'm going to, um, not F12, I'm going to F11 to full screen it. And now it looks like we are running a virtual machine on my system. Um, the latency isn't bad. I can scroll and there's not a lot of uh, like jiggle or anything like that. So I can it feels like I'm on a system. So we're gonna close this. Actually, let's read this real quick. 
So internet access is allowed subject to the following. Uh, this instance is not meant to perform assessments or interact with any live targets. So what they're saying is I can't use this system to hack anything outside of their virtual private network or anything outside of what they say I can. Um, and it would be very hard to do that anyway. It is very enclosed. Um, they make sure that everything is very um, self-contained. So it's very hard to get out. Uh, pen testing any target with or without consent outside of Hack the Box Labs is prohibited. So even if you do have uh, a penetration testing contract with a company, you can't use this VM, VM to do that. You would have to make your own VM and you can't use theirs. Uh, do not store any personal or sensitive information in this box. Um, I think they say that because it's going to be deleted anyway. Um, I also wouldn't put any personal information on this just because it is a virtual machine that is hundreds or thousands of miles away and there's no reason to put anything on here. Um, it's only purpose is to allow you to play in our labs. So that is exactly what it's for. And I think it does a really good job of that. So feel free to install any tools you prefer. Um, these tools will be deleted after you terminate this box. And PS, you have sudo. So you are the administrator of this box. It is basically like you installed Parrot on a VM on your machine and you can just go. Um, once the instance is terminated, all data, including tools you installed, will be lost. And yes, we know that. So let's actually open up a web browser first. Uh, you can actually see a little bit of artifacting. That's just because of the compression. So they're streaming a VNC server from the VM to you. So there is going to be some video artifacting. Um, it'll probably be worse on YouTube because there's also compression through YouTube as well. Um, so on Mozilla, you are greeted by first Privacy Badger and also Parrot OS. So they are using Parrot OS for this box. So on the VM is installed Parrot OS, which is a, well, it's the security version of Parrot OS, which is basically like Kali Linux. They have very similar tools, very similar um, UI, very, very similar box. Um, Parrot is a little bit more lightweight, I want to say. And I think it has some more tools, but honestly, Parrot and Kali, I've used both. They're very similar. And I would, out of all the Linux OSs, I think Hack the Box hit it right on the head. Parrot was a good choice. Um, Privacy Badger. I don't use Privacy Badger, but it learns to block invisible trackers. Uh, Hack the Box seems to think that it was a good choice to add to the Mozilla Firefox. So... I guess it's probably a good thing to have. I do know about Foxy Proxy. So Foxy Proxy is used by Ipsec. Uh, Ipsec is a hack the box YouTuber. He's great. He does uh, walkthroughs of all the retired boxes and he's just, he's a genius. Um, I'll put his videos in the link in the video description down there. Um, but Foxy Proxy, um, if you're using something like Burp Suite, or you have some sort of um, proxy server that you want to use and you want to turn it on and off easily, Foxy Proxy is what you do that with. So you can easily turn on or switch between proxies. So right now it's off. And if I wanted to switch it to burp, now I'm on burp and it has a little logo right there. And then I can turn it off just like that. I don't have to go into burp, turn off intercept, turn off the proxy and do all that crap. So. I'm kind of surprised that they use Google as the default search. I kind of would have expected DuckDuckGo or something a little bit more security minded, but Google is by far the best search engine and I can't fault them for using Google. Um, one thing I do want to do is a little speed test. So let's just type in internet speed test. Let's just use the default Google one. And we're getting about, it's still going up, about 1300 megabits per second, um, which is extremely fast. And to have it be a symmetric download and upload at both about 13, 14 megabits, 
1300 megabits per second is absolutely insane. It also has a very low latency from the server to Google servers or whatever. So latency is 15 milliseconds. Um, just to compare that, um, I do have a very fast internet connection, but let's, uh, let's just run one on my machine here. And you can see that I'm getting about half that. And that is probably the best internet connection I can get in this area. Um, I am like Northern California. And then you can see my upload speed is drastically lower than my download. So all like residential areas don't really have that much upload speed, which kind of sucks when I'm trying to upload YouTube videos. Um, but download is really what gets used in residential and then more industrial and business is where upload speed tends to be symmetric. So it'll be the same as your download. So let's go back to hack the box. Uh, F11 to full screen it again. That that didn't full screen it, did it? Okay, so uh, if you saw that, I did just have an issue with full screening um, the application sometimes. And if that happens, just close the tab, reopen a new tab that has the VNC server and hit F11 again, and it should full screen nicely. Um, so let's see what's in the file system here. And we'll also go through the applications. Um, so my data, anything you save in the my data folder will persist between instances you spawn. Remember, do not store personal or sensitive data. We do not back up this folder and only provide it at best effort. So this is a cool little thing that they added um, I did not see this the first time that I came on here, but it is very nice that they have a folder that does persist between instances. So if I was working on a box, I wrote some notes down and I wanted to put it on this system, I can just create a new text file, um, create document, text, text, plain text, uh, htb, and this text file will persist even if I shut down the instance and then restart it up. Um, that is very cool. Um, it's nice that they have that. And I think that was a good choice by them. Um, we also have some repos that they think that we might need. Um, this is sec lists. So this is the, um, GitHub repository that I talked about in this video about using and finding word lists. And then um, what else do they have on here? They also have Linux priv checker, uh, payloads, all the things and privilege escalation, awesome scripts suite. So these are all things that they think will be useful for their boxes um, and are honestly just useful for everything. Uh, everything penetration testing minded at least. Um, also on the desktop, they have Bloodhound, Burp, PyCharm, Postman, My Credentials, and Hack the Box VPN logs. So I have never used Bloodhound, but Burp is for web application exploitation. PyCharm is for Python um, programming. It's like an IDE for that. And then Postman is to make post requests and other... Um, I used it for finding the invite code for the hack the box. I sent a post request to the, the website that they give you. And that's how I got the invite code, um, as did all of you. Um, you don't have to use Postman. You can also send a post request using curl. Um, but Postman is definitely much easier. Uh, nothing in documents, nothing in downloads, nothing in trash. Um, Nothing else really in the files. Let's close that and let's go to applications. Um, I do like the little hack the box logo. Uh, usually this is a little parrot logo. So obviously they worked with parrot and created their own hack the box system, which I think is just super cool. So if you go down to pen testing, they have most used tools. So that is aircrack ng burp burp suite, uh, go buster weavely and Ettercap. I have never used Ettercap. I think Weebly is a web shell. That's interesting. I haven't used Weebly either, but GoBuster is for, um, my light just died. 
okay, my lighting is going to be different throughout this video. Uh, Go Buster is for brute forcing directory structures on websites. And then Burp Suite is for different web exploitation. Uh, there's information gathering. It's all the same stuff that's on Parrot and the majority of the stuff that's on Kali. Um, they also have programming. So Genie, Sublime, Postman, PyCharm, and VS, Codium, a bunch of the normal IDEs, uh, system tools, accessories, all that good stuff. One last thing I want to talk about was the specs of the system. So it is running released 4.9 of Parrot, um, and it is running kernel Linux 5.50. Um, Mate version 1.24, you have 8 gigs of RAM, and for your processor, you have a Intel Xeon, so that means it's not a consumer chip, it's more of a workstation chip, um, and it's the E5-2650, and it's the V4. So you have, it's running at 2.2 gigahertz, and you have four cores. Um, there is no dedicated graphics card but you do have 35 gigs of available space. So if you want to download um, a couple new tools or a decent sized word list, you could definitely do that. So if you guys like this video, hit like, get subscribed, hit that bell icon so you get notified of my future videos, and I'll see you guys all later.